What is happening, fish and friends, and welcome. <laughs> welcome to another episode of Debo's Fishing. Today, I think we need to discuss some combos. What do you say? What does this chatterbait have to do with combos? And what do all those other lures have to do with combos? Well, it has to do with the one combo. The combo that I think every single bass angler should have no matter what. Maybe it's the only combo that you want to take around with you. Or maybe it's the only combo the significant other will let you have. No matter what it is, I think it is the most important combo in a bass angler's arsenal. Of course, in my opinion only. What could that combo be? Well, let's take a closer look. And if you look close enough, the lures practically jump on this rod. Yep. It's my favorite combo. No matter what, a question that I get asked all the time is, hey, I'm looking to buy a new rod and reel. What setup should I get? Well, in my opinion, this is it. If you're only going to have one rod and reel combo, it's going to be a seven to seven and a half foot medium heavy fast rod. Now, for me, the reel, I like to keep something between a 6.3 to a 7.0 ratio. You can do almost anything with this combo. Chatterbaits to swim jigs, weightless Senko, swim baits, weightless flukes, some of the bigger crankbaits, this medium heavy fast tip is still flexible enough to get a good bend, but it's got enough backbone to make sure you're getting a good hook set when you're casting those larger crankbaits out a long ways. Now I even throw my squarebles on this, larger lipless crankbaits on this. I mean this combo can really do anything. Spinner baits, it is a Swiss army knife of combos. So if you only wanted to have one combo to take around with you, to take to the pond, this would be it and that is why because of its versatility it does so many things very well only a few things that it can't really handle and that's what we'll get into in today's breakdown of my top five bass fishing combos so that's number one huh what do you think number two will be sometimes i get shaky thinking about this next combo i mean i feel like i'm acting like my neighbor ned <laughs> he's kind of a little jerk <laughs> you know what maybe i should just Drop it. <laughs> okay, maybe the last one was a bit of a stretch, but I'm talking about the spinning combo. To me, the number one and number two combos, no matter what that I want to take with me, are my medium heavy and my spinning combo. Now that might surprise a lot of you. I don't do a lot of finesse fishing, but you know what? I'm gonna make more of an attempt this year to do more finesse fishing. It's something that I've got away from a lot in the past couple years. But one of my buddies on his channel, Jose from Bait and Bougie, did a video on the drop shot and that really inspired me to work this year and try to get better with my drop shot. Now why finesse and why this rod and reel combo? Well, I like a 3000 size spinning reel. Does most everything you need to on a finesse application. Paired with, it's really gonna be your choice, six, seven to a seven footish medium power spinning rod with a fast action tip. You can really do anything, any of those finesse techniques that I just talked about you can do on that rod. Now I know some guys will argue it and say, well, if you wanna go finesse, you wanna get a medium light rod, especially if you're gonna drop shot a lot. Well, if you're fishing a shaky head, it's a single hook, you wanna make sure you get good penetration, you might wanna bump up to a medium heavy. The medium spinning rod will do almost all those extremely well. There's pro level tournament anglers that simplify their spinning selection down and carry just the medium rod. That's it. I'm also not sure why there's such a stigma around spinning tackle the sissy stick some people call this thing the old sissy stick why why would you call it that i call it the uh, the old skunk eliminator because usually when you need to get rid of the skunk that's sitting in the boat you go for one of those finesse techniques right and if you're going to talk bad about the old spinning combo and refuse to carry one you're doing yourself a huge disservice swallow your pride grow as a bass angler keep one of these in the boat or in hand next combo Speaking about the next combos, these three are in no specific order because it really depends on the place that I'm going, what I'm fishing around, and what I'm actually going to be doing at that specific spot that's going to determine which one of these next three rods I would put in order. Now they're all equally important and for me, the next combo that I use the most is my flipping, pitching, Texas rigging, jigging combo. This is a seven foot heavy. I like a stiffer rod when I'm going to be fishing around a lot of cover with Texas rigs, jigs. When you start to get in some of that brush, you'll be a lot happier that you've got a heavier power rod. 
Now I keep mine paired up with a fast reel. You want that in case you're fishing a lot of brush and cover, you want to be able to get that fish turned and out with the quickness. I also go with a 20 pound fluorocarbon, go with what you are comfortable with, but I like to go as heavy as I can manage. And I find that 20 pounds still pitches and flips really well, but it's pretty darn tough. Follow-ups are huge. What I mean is if you only have one combo, your medium heavy combo, it's the most important. You can fish all your moving baits, all your search baits, but what happens if you get a bite It short strikes? Texas rig or a jig follow-up can be so, so important and successful when you're on a lake or a pond trying to get those fish. And once you find the few active fish, you can circle back and slow down with this combo. A lot of those fish that just didn't want to quite trigger on the spinner bait or the chatter bait that was going by them, they see one of these crawling through and you'll be in the money. Throw in your search bait, following up with your follow up bait. I tell you, it will turn days from a four or five fish day at the pond to a 10 or 15 day. Trust me. Next combo. It might surprise a lot of you that this next combo looks eerily similar to the last combo. This is a seven foot five extra heavy. The frog and roll. My favorite way to catch a fish. It'd be with the frog. The top water bite is insane. It's unmatched. I keep my flipping, pitching, frogging setup paired with 50 pound braid. I find that around here, it's more than adequate to get through the cover. It's really tough to break and it casts easier than the 65 pound braid. So that's why I go with that. Now, if you're down in Okeechobee fishing you know, cattails and milfoil and hydrilla and sawgrass, and I don't know what all they have down there. 65 pound braid probably makes more sense. But where I'm at here in good old Iowa, brush, vegetation, brush imitation, 50 pound braid does more than fine for me. So that's my number four setup. Now, am I saying this is the most important? No, but it's my favorite way to catch fish. So no matter where I'm going, I always, always have this rod and reel combo with me. Now, the reason I say it's important is because if you wanted to frog, and you're comfortable with the heavier rod, you could actually skip the previous one, the Texas rig jig. A lot of people throw their Texas rigs and jigs on an extra heavy setup like this. You definitely can, especially once you get comfortable with flipping and pitching, you can skip that one. So if you're trying to save money, you can go right to this and still have the ability to frog. With an extra long rod, you can make those real long casts. You can keep the braid on and if you're scared of the fish seeing it, if you're throwing like a Texas rig and a little bit clearer water, you could always put a leader on here, you know, a three, four foot leader and still flip and pitch. It's kind of the best of both worlds. Last combo time. Last but certainly not least in my lineup is the medium. Now you're saying, what, the medium is last in your list? Well, not necessarily. This is just one that I do not use as much as the others because most of the places that I fish are extremely woody or extremely grassy vegetation-y. And for me, anytime I'm throwing anything with a treble hook, I want a medium power moderate fast to fast action rod. Anytime you've got those troubles, you wanna make sure you keep the fish pinned. And having a rod with a good parabolic bend is gonna help without a rod that can stay good and bent over. For me, it's really hard to beat a medium power rod. Something in the seven to seven and a half foot length will cover most of your bases, depending on if you like a longer or shorter rod, whether you're fishing from a kayak, etc., etc. You can check out my video to the different rod links, power action. It goes over all that. I'll leave a little tag up here. But the real choice that I put on these, I like to go with a little bit slower reel. Anytime I'm cranking, working most anything with a treble hook besides a top water bait, I like to have something slower. I tend to reel real fast. So to ensure that I'm staying on the bottom, banging off things, I need to reel a little bit slower. A reel with a slower gear ratio like this, a five, three to one, helps me ensure that I am doing that. Those are my top five combos, but we know Fish Food for Thought is not about me, it's about you all. So please leave a comment below letting me know what is your number one, no matter what, must have combo in your arsenal. Is it the medium heavy? Is it a spinning rod? I don't know, let me know below, I want to hear it. I hope this helps you if you're asking yourself, what rod and reel combo should I get? This should at least give you the food for thought to get started. Now, if you have more questions about, hey, Debo, I'm gonna fish this, what would you recommend? Let me know below. I will give you to the best of my ability what I think the best combo would be for you. Now, of course, I'm no professional. I'm not on the Bassmaster Elite Trail, but I do fish a whole heck of a darn lot and I like to help people as much as I can. So let me know below. I would be happy to help you. But the real question is, what are we gonna talk about in next week's Fish Food for Thought video? Well, I don't know. Until next time. Thank you.